I, I got a picture one time. I was standing getting my car filled up some years ago. And where I was filling up the tank of my car, I looked across the straight ro road, and there was a, one of those cheap gas stations, you know. I'm not making fun. Just a cheap station. And part kerosene, part uh, diesel fuel, part castor oil, whatever you call it. But anyway, the fella come pulling that great big Cadillac. This man did. He said, fill up. And that fella pumped that cheap fuel in there, you know. He cranked that job up and it went, <laughs> there's a ball of smoke coming out the back of it, you know. And you know what was wrong with it? It was designed to burn high octane fuel. That's the reason a lot of folks go out of church on Monday, on Sunday morning. They've had a bowl of snap, crackle, and pop, and the pop's gone. <laughs> They're not built for that stuff. Too many folks are trying to digest sermon eggs that's designed for Christian eggs that can't wait to get the kitchen eggs to smoke their cigarettes. You need some real meat. Amen. And that's what's wrong with a lot of folks. That's the reason camp meetings are needful. Got to have them. I have. I don't know about you, but I have. I tell you, I, I've got to have them. Now, I want you to read with me verse 13 and verse 14, and then I want to bring you a message. Now, I, I'm not like a lot of you preachers. You're, you wouldn't admit this, but I don't have that much pride about me. I got this thought and this outline, not the meat God gave me that, uh, last year when it's here. Of course, everything you preach is original, you know, but... Uh, not so with me. I, Brother Billy Canoy, I don't know whether he knew when he uh, dished it out or not, but I'm glad he did. And God gave me the, the thought and the outline, and uh, I'm glad to tell you that I praise the Lord for what preachers preach today. If it's gun barrels straight from heaven, I'll, I'll take it. Listen, I'll beat the devil over the head with it. Amen. Now, I'm reading the last, th the last two verses in chapter 12. Then we'll have prayer, and you can be seated as we pray. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, and keep His commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work in the judgment with every secret thing. whether it be good or whether it be evil. Our Father, we thank you for your word. The light unto our feet, a lamp unto our pathways. I praise you for what we've already heard. Both messages this morning. God, how great they were. Lord, my old heart's just feasting still on those great big heavenly stakes, just great big old juicy stakes. And I praise you for it. Now, Lord, bless we pray thy servant as we come now to break the bread of life. And we will thank you and we will praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Now, you may be seated. I hate to do something now that I've got to do. I'm going to have to. I got a note a while ago. Uh, my adult, my wife has got to go get our daughter. She's home, you know, and, and she's got to drive from Visa to get her so she can bring her back to camp meeting. And to show you who's the daddy rabbit around our house, you know, she wrote me a note and said, when you want me to go, just give me the sign. Now, I need all of the notes. She said, I love you, you big rascal. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She'll kill me when I get home. Amen. I'd like to have said, he said, I love you, you big handsome rascal. Didn't say that. And so, honey, just leave in time so you can take the daughter up. She'll want to be here tonight. 
I heard a man say some time ago, and I want to share this with you, said, you can't, you can't half shoot a gun. Now, think about that a minute. You either shoot or you don't. <laughs> and he said, you can't half turn on a light. You either turn it on or you don't. And he said, you can't half preach. You preach or you don't. You like that, Billy? I like that, too. And uh, he said, uh, this colored man said that. Kind of sounds like one, doesn't it? But he said, you know, when I was a little boy down in Louisiana, he said, I'd be out playing in the road. And he said, my sister would come out on the porch and say, Hey, Jane, you get out of that road. He said, I stick my tongue out of that. And I just keep playing. And say, my other sister come out on the porch and say, Jane, you get out of that road. I stick out my tongue and head too. And said, my oldest sister, she come out on the post, and she say, James, Mama say, you get out of that room. Now he say, it ain't who say it, it's who say say it. <laughs> so preachers, we play, play sometimes a very insignificant part. It's not us, but it's who say, say it. It's who say, say it. And today, I want to tell you, he done went and say, say it. And I'm going to say it. And I'm going to mind, I might as well go ahead and tell you, I'm already highly intoxicated. Spiritually, that is. <laughs> Fact is, I know I'm drunk. I see two of you. <laughs> this matter of fear. I think we ought to scripturally deal with fear in its right perspective. Somebody has quoted erroneous when, by no means scripturally, said the Bible said perfect love cast out all fear. Well, it's partly so, but it does. that word all is not there. It's just not by perfect love cast out fear. Fear brings torment. Granted, it says so in the Bible. But you know, dear friend, I want to share with you today some things that I feel in my heart that we ought to be afraid of. I mean sincerely. I told Brother Ray Hill before I came to the platform and said, Brother Ray, if I had to preach right now, I'd preach on scared to death. Scared to death. Oh, you've said now, preach every way to me. I don't believe we as children of God have anything in the world that we ought to be afraid of. I disagree with you. I believe there's some things that we ought to intelligently hear. I believe God's Bible teaches it. Number one, I want to share with you and lay it to you to consider that I'm scared to death of sin. I'm scared of it. You said, now, preach up and wait a minute. Sin can't have any, can't do nothing with me. But I want to tell you, friend of mine, you start playing around with it. I'll promise you right now, it'll take you down. Amen. I've saw men, and I'm sure you have too, that thought they were somewhat different and they could handle sin. But I want to share with you, friend of mine, today that there's not one man or woman here today that's a match for sin of the devil. It takes the power of God for you to be an overcomer. I'm scared of it. I want you to know, my friend, it's intelligent when a man has sense enough to be afraid of some things. I remember when I was a young preacher boy, one time I got up in a pulpit and was preaching, and I made the sad mistake of saying, Come on, devil! You know, a young preacher will make a lot of foolish statements. 
an old preacher had been preaching for years, got me on the arm after service out in the country, said, come on, I want to talk to you, preacher. And I thought he was going, I could just see him patting me on the back, telling me how great a message I'd preach. He led me off down the road, and after a while he said, come on, let's walk up in the woods here just a little bit. Man, I said, he's really proud of me today. He got me back in those woods, and he turned around, fire coming out of his eyes. He said, I want to take up a club and beat you over the head with you. Said, why, that was the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life, to dare the devil to come on, amen. He said, if he had, you couldn't have handled him, amen. I want to share with you, dear friend of mine, that sin can get a hold of you and get a grip on you that you don't have power to break it. It takes God. Amen. Somebody said, I'll just go so far. I'll, I won't go all the way. I'll just kind of play around with sin a little bit. Well, I've got news for you, stupid. Sin is like a magnet. It's like, do you ever remember stopping that bowl that Mama made a cake in? You get one finger load, and you want to get another one, amen? Friend, you can't handle sin. You can't do it. If we could have, Christ died in vain. It's not you that's able to handle it, and you better flee from it. Amen. Better run from it. There are some of you right now that said, well, just so I don't get too involved, just so I don't, you know, get to mess it around too far over in the field, I'll just kind of go a little piece, and, and I won't go too much farther. I want to tell you, friend, the Bible said in the book of Job, if I sin, he marks me. And there's a lot of dear people right here right now, probably, that God marks you, and sin that you was playing around with became your downfall. And right now, dear friend, you're in pitiful shape. Flee from it. Get away from it. Have nothing to do with it. And ask God to give you power. Amen. Now, this is what the Brother May said last night. What kind of a message is it? A tomcat message scratches everything and gets around? Dave Jackson said, that's all I preached. Sin, you better be afraid of it. And you better realize that bigger men and women than you have been taken down by sin that they thought they could handle. You better know that, dear one, that there's not one of you here right now that if you get to playing with sin and get involved in it, before you know it, it'll have your life and dragging your testimony down and your power and your influence, you better stay with God. I'm afraid of sin. I'm scared of it. You know, I don't know if you'll admit it or not, but I can't handle it. Huh? I mean, I honestly can't. Huh? I don't have that kind of power. Now, you fellas may be stronger than I am, but I can't handle sin. I'm honest. Well, you said little sin. Yeah, but he said little foxes. Them little bitty foxes. Amen. They spoil the vine. They crawl around there. You may not see them. They may not look big. You say, well, preacher Blue, you don't know how strong I am. You don't know how big I am. But I'll tell you, I'll look back through the pages of this Bible here, and I'll find giants. I mean giants that sin got in their life, and down they went. How many of you say amen to that? Some of you better learn that. You better learn that. There may be somebody here right now playing around a little type of thing. Huh? Somebody told me a while back, but I said them straight. Said, well, I said, you're gone all the time. You all folks don't know you. Said, you can 
But you can have your time. You could live it out. God knows about it. Amen. Not after you get up in the morning and shave my face and look in there. Amen. Well, now you said that. Uh, you can just go ahead and, and uh, well, you can first John 1, 9. There's a lot of people that consulted that scripture already. Amen. They've kind of run up to God and said, you said if we'll confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And God, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you right now, my friend, there's more to it than that. Amen. I tell you, I'd like to sound some more like we shout with Brother Harold this morning, too. But God said, preach this. Now, if you're going to shout, you better do it now. Because we're just starting now. And it's just <laughs> 12 o'clock. That's PSD, preacher saving time. Sin is to be feared. I, I see my friend in the Word of God in Lot. I see him going down to Sodom. His evaluations and his... He didn't have the right of uh, evaluations on things. He cared more for grass and water than he did his family. He said, we can move into Sodom. We'll keep everything going just right. Nothing won't get a hold of us. Why, we just left old Brother Abraham. We'll still pray. We'll still sing hymns. We'll still have our evening devotion. But I want to tell you, you start messing with sin, and your Bible reading will stop, and your devotion will stop, and your testifying will stop, and your handing out facts will stop. A sin will stop it. Do I say amen on that? Well, some of you right now, how long has it been since you reached in your pocket and got a gospel track and hang it somebody? Uh, how long has it been? Well, you said, I wonder what happened. Sin you started just kind of gradually playing around with it. Not real big thing. Have you noticed yourself here lately saying, a oh, backwards? Oh, you're not cussing, are you? I'm going to come on. They start hollering at me every time I get up here. They must think I'm going to quit or something. I ain't going to quit fine. You said, well, I don't see no harm in a... I just say, well, my dear friend, listen to me. Let me ask you something. Is something creeping into your life. Just gradually creeping into your life. Let me ask you something. How long has it been since you caught yourself humming? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Huh? Well, you said, I've been thinking about giving up my Sunday school class. You see, it's beginning to creeping on you. Amen. Beginning to get a hold of you. Oh, he is a blessing. You know that kind of blessing? I tell you right now, I like when God gives me that kind of boldness. Amen. I believe I can whip this middle row. One person asked me why I'd done that. I said, every preacher ought to have a slick sleeve. Amen. Sin has what stopped some of you from coming to the house of God. Sin, it'll stop you from tithing. Look for a dollar bill and drop in the plate and say, bring it back 75 cents. Sin 
him stops these things. It never raises you high, but it takes you down. Amen? She never brings you up. She never praises God. She never lets you shout. She never brings hot tears down your cheek. She will dry you up. I'm afraid of it. I'm scared of it. Amen. Now, if you missed any shouting on that point, you might as well just uh, forget it from here on out. Amen. Next of all, I'm not only afraid of sin, I'm afraid of self. Mm. Let me say something that may be a little shocking to you. But I don't trust you. I don't trust none of you. But if that don't shock you, I'll do it now. I don't even trust me. Amen? The Bible said, I'm apologetic, to have no confidence in the flesh. That's preacher flesh. That's deacon flesh. That singer flesh. And oh God, I love singers that sing for God. But you know how much trouble I have even existing around this crowd that's just singing for the applause of men. That crowd of gag of maggots. They make me want to puke up a gut. Amen. But I haven't got any confidence in the flesh. Amen. Come on now, get your head up. I'll let you know when we're going to pray. Ain't going to pray now. Go preach what? Look at me. I'm a going to. Just keep on saying that. Have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Well, you said I'm strong. I'm strong. I got news for you, friend. We're not strong. Now, no wonder the Bible admonishes us. Finally, my brethren, be strong. But there's some more there. He said, in the Lord. In the Lord. Amen. Now, I've never saw like a day in my life. I don't think you have either. When there's many people having problems in the flesh. Now, don't sit there and lie to me, you hound. Uh, did you ever hear anybody say anything you wish you'd have said? One time there's a, this fella got up and he said, there's one thing about it. So these fellers, so these women's always bothering them. So I want to tell you right now, these women, they don't bother me. One old man got up with enough God in him and said what I wish I'd have said. He looked over his glasses at that man's wife and said, Honey, you better take your husband to the doctor. I wish I'd have said that. Amen. Now, who in the name of God do you think you're lying to? If you're normal and, and if you're human, I'll tell you, if women brought great men down the Bible, you knotheads better watch out. They can bring you down. Amen. They can bring you down. Oh, you said, don't bother me. You're a nut. You're crazy. They do bother you. Amen? They do bother you. I saw it, and I'm sure you have too. I've had my heart broken the past few months. A young man that I helped ordained into the deaconship and into the pastoral ministry 
When there a man in his church called me, he said, Preacher, my pastor fell. My pastor fell. Oh, Sammy, I'd like to kill me. Oh, Sammy, I'd like to die. I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and my tears dried up. His wife come to see me, looked like a dead woman. Car driver in my yard. I looked out, and here he comes. His shoulders bent. Somebody said I'd have kicked him, I'd have pushed him down. I didn't. I didn't condone his sin. I didn't have prayed for it, but I stretched out my arms. I said, Can you? Amen. And he laid over on my shoulder and we cried together. He said, My church is gone. He looked at me and he quickly. He said, My power is gone. I ain't got no power. He said, I ain't got no power. I ain't got no more power. He said, I can't preach. I can't preach. Oh, he said, I can't preach. And my home's gone, my home's gone. I heard one of his boys was looking for him with a gun. Oh, you said that'll never happen to me. I'll tell you the day it'll happen. The day you start putting confidence in that stinking, dirty, rotten flesh and not depending on God, it can happen to you. Amen. Considering thyself, lest thou also be what? Say it. Take heed now when you think you're standing, lest you what? Fall. Amen. And you said, I'm strong. Well, I'm going to stand up to you, brother, and be honest. My wife said, run back there. I know I read in the Bible about a man running out of his coat. But Brother Allen... I never have been there, but I don't know. I, I'm being honest. I don't know. Huh? Do you, do you men have it down in Congress? I mean, could you? Huh? Let me tell you something right now. Here's one thing about it. You may not know this flesh, but I know it. Amen. Let me see you, my hand, Brother Turner. You're made out of the same stuff I am, ain't you? Let's see your hand, Brother Sam. That's the same kind of stuff I'm made of. Fine, fine, fine. Hey, Billy, uh, can I hold up your hand now? Just... That looks about like the same stuff I'm made out of. Huh? Come here, missionary. Come here. Let me look pretty close, sir. That's the same kind of stuff I'm made of. You know what that tells me? You can't trust that either, can you? Huh? Well, I ain't much shouting ground, is it? There ain't much to shout on that either. I know this is what May is called a Tomcat message. Huh? Amen. Lady, that lady out of that yellow. You were shouting a while ago. Come here just a minute, lady. Come here just a minute. 
I want to tell you before you get here, I don't trust you. I give you a dollar, reckon I get a shout out of you. I think that's pretty good preaching, don't you? I thought this was pretty good preaching. Amen. There's my wife back there right now. You said, wait a minute, preacher Blue Holy. You're not going to say it. Let me tell you, I love her. She's mine. I praise God for her. But you know, I know day by day by day, she's flesh just like everybody else. You know, I say every day when I pack that old suitcase in that old car, I say, honey, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Sammy, I go in that old motel room at night after I've preached. I take that old chain. It ain't because I'm afraid of my friend of scary things in the atmosphere. It ain't that. I know me. Huh? Some of you looking at me kind of odd right now. Oh, you said, oh, Brother Blue, he wouldn't do anything wrong. Why, you rascal, you, you're just like me. But I don't care. You said, I'll tell you right now, I'm a preacher, I'm a deacon. It don't make that much who you are. If you're flesh, you better not trust that stinking stuff. Amen. I'm scared of it. Amen. I'm gone 47 weeks out of every year from home. More sometimes. I usually come in on Interstate 75, north or south, one or the other. I get on 75 and go over to State Road 64. State Road 64 is 74. And eventually I turn off of the state roads and down little rural road. Turn off of the little rural road back up through the little bit of private road that leads up to a few houses. I get off of the pavement and onto the gravel and onto the dirt. You know how I want to live. I want to live that night when me and my family sit down at the table. that I can look at my wife. Honey, I know it'll embarrass you a little bit, but come here just to be a darling. Come here, baby. Oh, she's my wife. Oh, it's a dog. She's my wife. I want to live where I meet that girl coming like that that's never hindered my ministry, that's never slowed me down. But I can look at her and say, honey, I'm still true to you. When my little grandson to run to meet me, I want to live Billy, so I won't have to be a child. trusting you, you better not trust you. Hold oh, Dr. A.J. Showalter, put her down right. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Amen. It's not whether you'll have too much trouble living for God here today or not. I dare say you'll not want to have an illegitimate love affair. I dare say that'll, that'll not give you too much problems this week. But I dare say if I know anything about the working of the devil, when you're away from the shouting, when you're away from the wave into the Bible, when you're away from the atmosphere where the people of God gather together, 
Are you away from the hallelujahs and the praise of the Lord? When you're away from all of that, the old devil will stick up that uh, dart in that old flash uh, and will begin to try to lead you along. Uh, in that hour, hallelujah, uh, I'll look up uh, and say, lead me to that rock. Uh, that fire is an eye. Uh, that is a refuge. Uh, a refuge in a time of storm. Uh, in trouble, hallelujah. I'm glad he's there. Amen. I'm afraid of me. <laughs> Some of you look at me and say, Oh, why, Jesus? Well, get in line. There's a bunch of them don't like this. I don't trust me. Greater is he that is in you. Now we're getting down to where we can trust. Then he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ with strength. We're more than conquerors through him. That loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. I'm scared of sin. I'm scared of self. Then thirdly, I'm scared of the shell. Well, I don't want the shelf, Sam. No. Oh, I don't want the shelf. Joe Parson, I want to be like you. I want to go down in the battle. Boys, I don't know what may happen to you before I go home. But if I'm sick and maybe a stroke's got me, and I can't speak, I can't speak good. Come over and kind of pucker up my lips so I can spit in the devil's eye. Amen. I want to go down with a sword in my hand. <laughs> Singing, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord, I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. During World War II, in which I was privileged to serve, I said privilege. Did you hear that I said privilege? I like that too. Privilege to serve. And I remember so well. I remember so well those mornings when it would be dress right. Dress. Look down those lines to see if everybody was dressed up. When the command came, from out in the middle, I stood the battalion commander. There was the company commander. There was the platoon commander. The squad commander. Those squads would count off, and they'd say to that squad leader, all present accounted for. Squad leader would say to the platoon sergeant, all present and accounted for. The platoon sergeant would turn to the company commander and say, all present. And accounted for. And after a while, glory to God, down yonder in the middle of the parade field, standing up with that old gray headed general, all of a sudden those company commanders, A Company first, shot all packed up and accounted for. Glory to God. <laughs> Yeah. 
bring glory to God. Oh, my soul. We'd be marched out. We'd march out the field. But oh, glory to God one day. After a while. With those battle streamers in the air. Glory to God. When the rules called. Ooh, hallelujah. When he calls my name and said it blue, I want to stay present and I tell him, Father. Hey, man, I, I don't want to be on the shelf. I, I want to be in the battle line of fighting for God and the right. I'm scared of myself. I don't want it. There may be a Sunday school teacher out here today. There may be a preacher. There may be just that layman. God puts you on the shelf. Oh, Sam, can you imagine how lonely it must feel on that shelf? I'd hate to have to come in here and have to hide off somewhere. I was in a revival meeting some years ago and looked down over here on the right hand side and saw a man that I thought I recognized him. I said, that, I believe that's him. I kept on preaching, preach and preach. I have to service over, I have to change clothes always. I, the preacher had to go somewhere in a hurry and he told me, showed me how to turn the lights out and everybody's gone. He said, preacher, when you leave, just strip the lights off. I went out the door to get in my car, I started change clothes and I heard a voice from over at the corner of the building on the outside said, preacher blue, that's you. I said, yes, yes. He said, everybody's gone now. I said, did I talk to you? He was a man that had fallen, a man that had went down. We got in the car, and I laid my Bible down to the side of me. We rode for a few minutes, and he said, can I, can I pick up your Bible? And I said, why, sure. He took it up in his arms. And he kissed it. Oh, he said, oh, I sure so would like to preach it to you. I, I sure so would like to preach one more time. He said, Ed, do you remember when I preached from this right here? He woke up one thirty in the morning. He said, Let's let's sing a verse of amazing grace. I don't want to share. I don't want to share. <laughs> I want to stand in ranks. I want to be standing there over the God with, with the people of God. I don't want to myself. I'm scared of myself. And there's so many I fear that's on the shelf right now. Not usable. In the last days, 
Mr. Blue. I don't know what time you can you better go here. Next, I'm afraid of something else. I'm afraid of the seat. The beam of seat. That judgment seat. Folks, I'm scared of it. <laughs> All them prayers you prayed, that you prayed them for the benefit of somebody else's ears, God's going to stick fire to it. All them messages you preach, that you preach them to please man, God's going to stick fire to it. All those things that you've done that you thought was praiseworthy, but you done them with the applause of men. If it wasn't for God, he's going to stick far to it. You said, oh, I'm going to be shouting at the judgment sea. I'm not. Boy, you're going to be just a very few, ain't you? i got news for you. I don't believe I recognize anybody around here that's going to run over me. I don't think I'm going to have to get out of your way. Brother Mifford, I ain't, I ain't worried about my shouting, but I sure am a dreading the torch. When all that old hay, wood, and stubble starts going up, boy. Oh, Brother Turner. Oh, God. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. I'm just awful afraid that there's going to be a lot of answering done there by people that we thought might be shouting, but I'm afraid it's not so. Huh? You said, why can't you preach like Brother Hal or Brother Billy or Brother Mays? I got to preach the preaching that God bids me to preach. I'm scared of it. The times I got out of the will of God. The times when I listened to me more than I listened to Him. The times when I forgot about Psalms 37 and 7, where it said, wait patiently on the Lord. I'm really worried. Oh, you said you're going to be lost? Uh-uh. There may not be much of me left when he gets through burning. But after a while, he's going to touch that torch to a place. There may not be a big old hunk of gold. But that little hunk of gold will come out singing. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, ransomed from sin and a new work's begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. I didn't say by the blood of the crucified one. It'll come through, boys. Amen. I may not be able. To claim as much at the end of the furnace as you will. But I'm glad of one thing. When my name is called, I'll say not because of me, but because of him. I'm here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. Well, say now, I just, I, I never felt so led to give an invitation in my life. I really do, Brother Doyle, I'm honest. I feel like God wants me to give an invitation. I want them to come to the instrument. Those ladies that played for me a while ago, would you come? Boy, I, I'm not trying to take up time, Brother Sam. I, I just got to do this. I got to do it. I feel like in my heart there may be somebody here right now. And God's speaking to your old heart. Maybe right now you need just to own up how weak you are. Maybe you need to just say, Lord, 
I'm so afraid it will flash. I'm so afraid of me, I don't trust me. I want them while they play softly. Our heads are down, eyes are closed. Nobody looking around. I wonder how many will be honest and say, Preacher, God showed me today. Oh, Brother Ed, I see me. I see me, Preacher. I know me. Oh, God, Brother Ed. I know God shifts that to me. I need it. I wonder if you'll be honest enough to raise up that hand there to go. Oh, there's a multitude. Raise it up high and hold it and say, Preacher. Oh, God. Take them down. Take them down. There may be a multitude of others. But today, sin, sin's about to wreck you. Sin's about to destroy you. Oh! Sin got its grip on you. Sin about taking joy in your power. No joy, no thrill. I wonder if there's another hand that'll go up but never raise it a while ago and say, that's me, preacher. That's me, brother Ed. Yes, son. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, son. God bless you. Our Father, this brother Dawn erects a hymn. Oh, God. Lord, speak thou heart. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus. God, may men and women just come clean today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While we stand and while we sing, why don't you move right now? Sing it, brother. Yeah. Number 375. How thine own way, Lord? How thine own way. Thank you. 